All right, everybody, I'm glad to see that there is so much energy in this room at the end of the day. If I could ask you to tone down the energy a little bit. Thank you very much. I'm glad to hear that you're all very energetic and enthused for the last session of the day. Thank you for staying. And I think this will be a really, in a way, this is a privilege to be the last uh, panel of, the, of a very interesting day. Not that we um, uh, want it to be last, but it's interesting because we actually have heard a lot of the themes that we touched on today already in some of the other speakers' talks. And uh, I hope that you'll be uh, hearing and having some discussion about what the, some of this might be. So this is a panel on dynamics and governance of risk in Metro Vancouver. We're looking at a couple of questions here, and I think some of them uh, have already been presaged, as I mentioned, but Bill uh, Reese was probably the one who first mentioned one of the related themes. He talked about, or he asked about climate refugees earlier today. And the idea, I think, at the flip side of that question is, well, what about us? How prepared are we in Metro Vancouver for climate change and related uh, disasters and risks? Uh, the panel today was uh, convened to talk about a couple of main issues that I think would be of interest to everyone here. One is, what is our what is our risk? What's the nature of our risk in Metro Vancouver? How has disaster risk been changing? And how do we anticipate that it will change into the future uh, as a result of many of the factors that we've already heard about? So for example, um, urban development, population growth, immigration, land use, um, and so forth, and uh, urban and regional planning policies over the past few decades. What's been the legacy of planning for our risk? Uh, for our risk and the risk of future generations in this region. That's question number one. Uh, the question number two then is, if we're going to do a reasonable job or a better job of planning for that risk, what are some of the challenges that we have to acknowledge and confront? So those are the two um, primary themes. And of course, one of those challenges has got to be the governance issue, which I suspect that uh, most, if not all, of the panelists will be talking about. So. Before I introduce the panelists, I just want to raise a couple of key points that I suspect, I don't know, but I suspect that the panelists will be touching upon, and they kind of set the context. So one of the points is that, um, I think about all the people who live in this region. We don't all face the same risk. We don't face disaster risk in the same way. There are very uh, strong disparities in uh, how much risk and what kinds of risk we face. And for example, so the landscape then is, uh, is not uniform with respect to risk. What are some of the, the non-uniformities? Well, uh, some parts of the region are in floodplains and others aren't. And who is living in the floodplains and who isn't? There are also differentials in terms of the um, influence of urban form and where development is concentrated, as well as what kind of development is being built or has been built. Uh, for example, different types of buildings are differently vulnerable to damage in, in earthquakes, uh, floods, and so on. Uh, buildings of different vintages, different conditions, and so forth. So the built environment really matters, and there are clear differentials in this region in terms of risk from that. There's also differentials in terms of the people who are there and the social and economic vulnerabilities, the uh, differential vulnerabilities of, say, marginalized um, populations are very different right, than the vulnerabilities of, um, say, higher income populations. And an open question here is the vulnerability of immigrant groups who are relatively new to the region, um, and they have some resources and capacities that are, uh, that are resources and in other ways may be a disadvantage. So differentials in terms of uh, social and demographic characteristics. So basically, point number one, um, there are clear differentials in the vulnerability of the people in the place. And yet, uh, point number two is that in some ways, it's not just about uh, differences within the region is also about how the risk is a regional problem. And that way we are, we, sh we do share uh, the risk in certain senses. For example, um, flood risk is not a city by city problem, it's very much a regional problem. Uh, earthquake risk, similarly, if you have a major earthquake, it's not going to hit a particular neighborhood, it's a neighborhood scale problem, it's a very much a metropolitan area problem uh, through, for example, the influence of infrastructure systems and. Uh, emergency preparedness, uh, governance structures, and so forth. So we are in it together, um, but there are also clear differentials in the risks that we face. So those are two themes that I want, that I'm hoping that we can keep in mind and listen for. And with that very quick introduction, let me uh, introduce the speakers, and they'll be speaking in the following order. So uh, Ken Cameron will be first. 
Uh, he's an adjunct professor at Simon Fraser University's Urban Studies Program and also past chair of its advisory council and currently also director of Place Speak, a uh, fellow of the Canadian Institute of Planners and uh, also a SCARP alum from decades ago. Uh, most importantly for this panel, he is formerly manager of policy and planning for the Greater Vancouver Regional District, now Metro Vancouver, of course. And he played a very key role in, uh, in the creation of TransLink in 1999, and also a key role in the adoption of the Livable Region Strategic Plan in 1996. And he'll be talking about uh, the latter in particular in his presentation. Tamsin Mills is Senior Sustainability Planner with the City of Vancouver since uh, 2011. And she's also a SCARP graduate. Uh, in fact, just walking in, she said the last time she was in this room was when she was presenting her master's project a few years ago. Uh, that particular project led to an award-winning paper in the journal Risk Analysis, which she co-authored with Tim McDaniels and others. And that paper was on exploring robust alternatives for climate adaptation in forest land management. Uh, at the city of Vancouver, Tamsin plays a key role in planning for climate change adaptation and in particular planning for sea level rise, which would be uh, one of the areas I should be talking about today. And our third panelist is Professor David Edgington in the UBC Geography Department. He, um, even though he is in geography, he's also a former practicing planner uh, in Australia. And David's research focuses primarily on aspects of economic geography in the Pacific Rim. However, he's done a considerable amount of research also on studying disaster impacts and recovery. Um, one of, uh, he has a major book on the rebuilding of Kobe, the city of Kobe, Japan, after the 1995 Hanshin earthquake. And uh, currently he's studying the rebuilding of Christchurch, New Zealand after the 2010 and 2011 earthquake. So a lot of um, grounded uh, studies of disasters and their impacts on cities. So these are three very uh, valuable and complementary perspectives and uh, we're looking forward to here in the talk. So Ken will go first. And just the question that I've asked him to um, help us think about is basically what's the legacy of prior planning decisions on current disaster risk? So to reflect on how urban development over the past few decades has shaped disaster risk, and in particular, the role of regional planning, the Liberal Region Strategic Plan in this process, uh, with a particular um, interest, I think, from this perspective on what happened and what's happening in Richmond. Okay, 